Well, first of all, Barbie asked me a couple of weeks ago if I would do a prayer and a toast tonight. But being the father of the bride, I get to say a little bit more than that. <laughs> you get one shot at this in your life with your daughters, and so we were a little bit surprised. I have to tell you, when Barbie asked if she could have the wedding here, because this is not the house that the girls were raised in. We got this house much later, and but in the five years that we have been here, our granddaughters have been born, and they've run around this yard, and they've played, and filled the house with laughter. We've had Christmases and other family events here. We had Farley actually come here and ask if he could marry Barbie. So we add tonight to a long list of reasons why <laughs> this is not just a house. This place has a soul now, and it's our home. And so on behalf of Tom and Luana Baggett and Helen and I, we want to welcome you to our home. <coughs> And we're so glad that you have given a piece of yourselves to our children tonight. It was important to us that they be surrounded by the people that we love and care for the most. I also have to thank our really very dear friends, Jean and Barbara Dorf, who graciously allowed us to use their property tonight for the ceremony. I always felt like my girls would be married in a church. And with Kit, that happened. And so I was a little surprised <laughs> to think we were gonna do this here, but I have to say, after the week we've had with weather, and when I came down those steps tonight with Barbie, and I looked at that backdrop, that is something that only God himself could have done. And as always, when I am surrounded by his beauty, I feel that much closer to him. It was extra special tonight because he brought with him the souls of all of our loved ones who have gone to join him in paradise. And I know Barbie and Farley, that they were there tonight, and they were surrounding you, and they were holding you, and they were loving me, just as they always dreamed they would when they were alive. Speaking of God, a few years ago, he sent us two of his sweetest, most precious angels to take care of. I can remember back then, they used to call me Squeezy Man. <laughs> Because at night, when it was time for bed, I'd chase them in their room, <clears throat> and I'd squeeze them so hard. And I promise you, any of you here with young children or young children in your future, there's going to come a time that you're going to long to have that back, even for just a minute. But those two precious angels have now grown into the most <laughs> remarkable women we know. They were a pleasure to raise. But we've often commented on how different, how two girls from the same parents could be so completely different. And you might ask yourself, could I love one more than the other? But even any parent will tell you that's impossible. But Helen helped me to understand that I love my girls differently for their differences. Kit is Helen made over. <laughs> and I know I love Kit for all the reasons that I fell in love with her mother in the first place. Where with Barbie, I see me. I know that birth order had something to do with it, but Kit, even as a little girl, being the oldest, she was always so worried. She was always so concerned, but she was always so protective of us where Barbie was always so happy-go-lucky. <laughs> Everywhere Barbie went, she was running, looking for that next adventure. But she was always smiling. She was the smilingest kid I ever knew. And I know that's why, when she was in preschool, her, her teacher named her Princess Sunshine. <laughs> and coincidentally, 
I always thought that was so funny because coincidentally, my song for Barbie has always been Sunshine on My Shoulders by John Denver. John Denver, I know some of you are too young to even know who he is. <laughs> but I promise you, he was, an, he was one of the greatest American songwriters. And the way, he, the way he had with words, and that song in particular, I have to tell you, a very personal but amazing experience. And I want to share it with you so you can understand. Several years ago, I was going through a very difficult time in my life. My mom had just passed away at 59. She had a long battle with cancer. Helen and I were struggling, as even the best marriages will. And then to top it off, something bad happened to me at work. And I just did not think I could take any more. I really, I felt like I was drowning. So one morning when I was running, as I usually do, I was praying, but I was asking God to please help me. Help me see the light. And out of 2,000 songs on my iPod, what do you think came up? <laughs> He's a plant. <laughs> Sunshine on my shoulders. And I immediately saw Barbie's sweet face. I do not believe in coincidences. I will tell you that. I believe God has a purpose for everything that He does. And this was his way of letting me know, through Barbie, the sunshine on my shoulders. He was reminding me of what has now become the mantra of my life. And I know you've all, anybody who knows me hears this too, they just are so sick of hearing it, but it always works out. Helen and I have always prayed that our girls would be healthy and happy, and someday they would meet that special person that they could share the rest of their life with. With Kit, we hit the jackpot. <laughs> Joey Summers has so many fine qualities, but what we love the most about Joey is the way he treats our daughter and the father that he is to our granddaughters. With Barbie, <laughs> when Barbie first started dating, there were a couple of those characters we were a little shaky about. <laughs> but there was one boy in particular, I will tell you, he was a good kid, and he adored Barbie. I have to tell you, on the night of their first date, I just happened to be out in the yard about 45 minutes before he was supposed to get there. <laughs> Coincidentally. And his car is circling our house for 45 minutes. He is so excited about going out with Barbie. So I waited up, and when she got home, I asked her how it had gone, and she, she just didn't feel the same way about him. And I was explaining to her that a lot of people go their whole life looking for somebody who thinks that much of them. And I can remember her saying, but Dad, why does he have to love me so much? <clears throat> and then came Farley. And now Barbie understands how someone can love someone else so much. We have come to love Farley Baggett like he's our own. But it's not about his looks or what he does for a living. It's about the way he looks at Barbie <coughs> and how he makes her feel. The look that Barbie and Farley have for each other is priceless. Helen and I know that look. And it's the look that will get you through whatever life throws your way. And so my prayer tonight is that God will always hold Barley and Barbie very close and protect them and always remind them of that look. And my toast is to Barley Baggett. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest, the most precious wedding gift that you're going to get is for me. Hold it close and cherish it. Just like I've done all these years. I thank God that I got to have her for as long as I did. 
But now, she gets to be the sunshine on your shoulders.